understand that? Okay, read it one more time. We in St. John chapter 14. What, other, what else did Jesus Christ say? I want you to also get this in what Jesus Christ meant by a man should be a hiding place from the wind. St. John chapter 14 and 6. Read it. Jesus said unto him. Read on. I am the way. I am the way. Read on. The truth. Come on. And the life. Okay, so Jesus Christ is what? He is all. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the light. He let you know being in the truth is the protection that is needed from the destruction that is coming. Do everybody understand that? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. The book of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. Everybody in the truth that is, that is uh, clean by the words that Jesus Christ has spoken unto them is, will be protected. Period, point blank, no doubt. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. Read it. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Okay, this is the truth. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Read on. The righteous runneth into it. Read on. And is safe. And is what? And is safe. Okay, so we will be kept safe. There's a lot of hell coming. I'm telling Listen, I'm telling you. A lot of times, uh, most of the time, people are not affected by tragedy because it don't hit close to home. People, the scriptures done told you. Um, because iniquity shall abound and love of many of them shall wax cold. People don't give a damn about nobody no more. Nobody give a damn, okay? About nobody. <laughs> Somebody go there and get shot right next to you. you know? <laughs> People, damn, that guy got jacked the hell up. <laughs> you finish eating your pizza. <laughs> you ain't traumatized for days, you know, weeks and months. You don't need therapy. Like, people don't care no more. Until, until something happens to them or somebody that's close to them. That's when they start to take a step back and start to really start thinking. Start feeling the effects of the tragedy that happened. But hearing it on the news and it happened to somebody else, you are, you, you, you are not connected to that. That's not enough. So what's going to actually start to happen, what's coming, and I'm not, you know, listen, the, the, the class is about to get dark, okay? Okay? I know you want me to prophesy smooth things, but... <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> you want to hear about Hanukkah coming up and all that? I'm going to tell you. What I'm telling you is mass destruction is coming, okay? Death on a wide scale, okay? It's coming. That's what people is going to be dealing with. And what you don't understand is, well, you know, I don't want to jump the gun. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to get to it. But uh, what you don't understand is it, it, it's coming to your neighborhood because it's already here. It ain't like it ain't already on the earth. You just ain't paying no attention to it. You ain't paying no attention to what's actually happening in the, in the majority parts of this earth. People are catching hell already. Already. And you're so removed from it. Thinking that, believing that, it will never come here. That this is a place of protection. Again, your confidence, your hope, your trust is in Egypt. You thinking they're going to protect you? You thinking they're going to they're gonna defend you? And you don't even understand that they are the ones that's against you. <laughs> they're the ones that has it going all over the earth the way it's going. For you to think that they ain't gonna bring it here, you know, this is they, you know, this is just the the the, um, the jewel of the earth. But they're gonna bring it here. Okay, they're gonna bring it here. Again, where we at? It's the end of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. Read verse 10 one more time. I see it got dark. Everybody got it got real quiet. Everybody thinking now. <laughs> why are you thinking when Christ steps in between you and the danger? That's why we went to that first. Everybody understand that? Huh. You ain't supposed to be getting nervous. Proverbs 18 and 10. Read it again. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Read on. The righteous runneth into it. Read on. And is safe. Okay, run into it. God, the Lord, Jesus Christ. Do everybody understand that? The way, the truth, the life, Jesus Christ. Everybody got that? The righteous, the ones that's going to do what is right, that is going to be clean by the word that Christ has spoken unto them, are the ones that's going to be kept safe. According to prophecy. Let's get Isaiah chapter 32, verse 2. Let's read it again. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 2. So, yeah, after the Day of Atonement, you know, your, your slate is clean. Your sins are forgiven. Um, you're supposed to move forward um, and live the life that you know that God uh, created you to live, that you was uh, made for, to praise his name, to glorify his name. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 2. Read. And a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind. Okay, all of these uh, sayings from the wind. Uh, wind represent, representing uh, destruction. Um, everybody understand that this meant a, a, a stormy wind, um, something that will kill you. 
um, hurricanes and, and, and uh, tropical storms with wind upwards of uh, 200 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, uplifting, uprooting trees and throwing it like missiles. <laughs> Everybody knew that that wind was talking about destruction. Okay, not you know, a cool breeze. Everybody <laughs> understand that? Okay, but a destructive wind. The wind is representing a destructive. Let's get the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 7. Revelation 7. And we're going to go to verse 1, where it's going to be showing you clearly that that wind is talking about destruction. Revelation chapter 7, and we're going to read verse 1 to 4. Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 to 4. Read that. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Okay, four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. The four corners of the earth represent the east, the west, the north, and the south. Okay, so they were standing over every area of the earth. Read on. Holding the four winds of the earth. Okay, so these winds, you're going to see the way that it's talking about these winds. is talking about how destruction is coming all over this earth. You're going to see that. Read on. That the wind. That what? The wind should not blow on the earth. Read on. Nor on the sea. Read on. Nor on any tree. So again, remember what's, what's uh, they holding back? They're holding back the wind from blowing on the earth. What is that wind representing? We're going to see. Read on. And I saw another angel ascending from the east. Read on. Having the seal of the living God. Read on. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels. The four angels that was holding back the wind. Read on. To whom it was given. Read on. To hurt the earth. To do what? Hurt the earth. Okay, so how was the earth going to be hurt once they let the wind go? Once they let that wind go, that's letting you know hurt was coming to the earth. What is that wind representing? That wind is representing destruction that is coming to the earth. To whom it was given to hurt the earth, read on. And the sea. Read on. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea. Come on. Nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Meaning that, you know, bring the people back, the, the ones that's supposed to come back. Um, let them come in before the, the wild destruction, the mass destruction actually uh, break forth. Hold that and get the book of Ezekiel. That's also written in Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, and it's letting you know that that wind was, that, that hurt that was coming to the earth was uh, going to be in the form of, of people being destroyed, people being murdered, people being killed, people being slaughtered. And Ezekiel chapter 9 and 4 will give you a clear image of that. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. Read. And the Lord said unto him, Come on. Go through the midst of the city. Come on. Through the midst of Jerusalem. Come on. And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry. Come on. For all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Who is the Lord going to save? The ones that is not comfortable being here. The one that sighs from all this wickedness. That cries against all the abominations that is... Uh, uh, displayed here. Read on. And to the others, he said in mine hearing. Read on. Go ye after him. Okay, so this is who the wind going to blow on, the others. Okay, go ye after them. Read on. Through the city. Come on. And smite. And do what? And smite. Read on. Let not your eyes spare. Come on. Neither have ye pity. Come on. Slay utterly old and young. Come on. Both maids and little children. Okay, so this is the form that the destruction is coming in. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah now, chapter 32. Isaiah chapter 32. So the Bible is talking about it. The Bible is talking about destruction coming. If you live, if, if you awake, okay, and, and it's high time to awake out of sleep and you actually pay attention to what's going on on this earth, um, you see destruction is, you know, already in different parts of this earth and it's coming. It's coming all over this earth. The whole earth is threatened. This is a, this is a fact and a reality of your lifetime. This is not a, a, some folklore or, you know, some fable. Some fiction, some made-up story. This is something that you see unfolding in your lives. Read on. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 2. Read it again. And a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind. Come on. And a covert from the tempest. A covert from the tempest. So now it's letting you know that wind is also tempest. It's a tempestuous wind. Okay? A storm. Okay? Other parts of the Bible, it, it describes that again as a destruction. As a destruction coming. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. I don't want it to be, I want it to be undoubtedly clear that when the Lord is saying that he's going to protect you from the wind, he's talking about the destruction that's coming to this earth. I want that to be clear. If the Lord is telling you destruction is coming all over this earth, now Revelation chapter 7 said all over the earth, the east, the west, the north, the south, okay? All over the earth. For you not to believe it is for you not to believe God. 
For you to think that it ain't going to happen means you think that God ain't going to keep his word. For you to pray that he don't do it is you praying against the will of God. <laughs> it's going to happen. Now, you're going to be in it. That's it. <laughs> you're going to be protected from it or you're going to be taken away by it. And that's based upon whether you are clean through the words that the Lord our God have spoken unto you. Again, let's get the book of Ezekiel chapter 38. That also talks about that storm, that wind representing destruction. Ezekiel chapter 38, and we're going to start at verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 9. Read. Thou shalt ascend. Come on. And come like a storm. Okay, talking about a whole army coming, an invasion. This one is talking about Russia. An invasion coming, an army coming. Read on. Thou shalt be like a cloud. To cover the land. Read on. Thou and all thy bands, and many people with thee. Okay, so that's it on that. That's it. I just wanted to, you know, get that. That's it. Okay, let's go from there. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 32. Coming like a storm, meaning covering the sky all over the place. To do what? To do harm. To do harm. Isaiah chapter 32. Read it again. And a man shall be as in hiding place. From the wind. That man is Jesus Christ. That hiding place means protection. Okay, read on. And a covert from the tempest. Okay, the covert, again, is talking about protection. Um, from, these, the, from the destruction, from the plans of the, the demons uh, in the flesh on this earth. Read on. As rivers of water in a dry place. Okay, so now um, that destruction is going to come as uh, an invasion. One of the plans. And by many other things. Jesus Christ spoke about this when he mentioned that if he don't cut the time short, if he give them enough time to complete their plans, if he give them enough time to put in place all the stuff that they want to put in place, everybody would actually be dead. They would accomplish their plan and kill the majority of the people um, that they want to kill. Do everybody understand that? Sure. Everybody got that? Sure. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Uh, the, um, let, let's get the one in Mark, Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Just think about it. So you might think, well, why do people want to kill almost everybody on earth? Right? Why would somebody want to do that? Well, we're going to get to that. I ain't going to ask you. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and what, what, what benefit do they get out of that? Just there killing everybody. I don't see it. I don't understand. Mark chapter 13, verse 19. Mark chapter 13, verse 19. Read it. For in those days shall be affliction. Okay, so affliction, tribulation, uh, the, all throughout the Bible, different parts of the Bible. In much tribulation shall you enter into the kingdom of God, time of trouble such as there never was. All this is all throughout Scripture. In those days shall be, trip, uh, shall be affliction. Read on. Such as was not from the beginning of the creation. Read on. Which God created unto this time. Read on. Neither shall be. Okay, an unlearned person is going to think that this is talking about 70 AD in, during that period, but we know that God don't make no mistakes. That's not the worst time ever in the history of the earth. Okay? You can clearly see from the words that Christ is speaking that this is going into precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little for us to learn the knowledge that God is telling us about this destruction, this time of tribulation. This is going to be in the time of the end. That's why he's also stated uh, right before the very end. That's why he also stated, through much tribulation shall you enter into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has not come yet. Okay? Read on. Verse 20. Come on. And except that the Lord had shortened those days. Read it one more time. And except that the Lord had shortened those days. Read on. No flesh. How many flesh? No flesh. How much flesh? No, no flesh. No flesh. That's you. That's me. That's all of us. No flesh. Read on. Should be saved. Yeah, if the Lord gave them the time that they actually need and want, they would be able to complete what it is that they're trying to do. So the Lord said, you know what? I'm not giving you all that time. They mad as hell, too. They mad as hell. It's like when Christ walked the earth in the flesh and the demons cried out, mad as hell. Asking, what would that we to do with thee? You know, thou Jesus, thou son of David. Are uh, thou come to destroy us before our time? The demons complain. What you doing here? This is our time. Huh? We supposed to be possessing people, having them throw themselves in fire? We supposed to be jumping on top of people, having them running through the church, punching people in the jaw? 
You in the church casting the demon out. <laughs> but this is our time. What you doing here? So they get mad. They get mad and mad. And when they see Christ interrupts it, he said, I'm not going to give you that time. I see, you know, you, you're trying to speed things up. There was, a, there was a, uh, a, a class I did a very long time ago, oh, upwards of a, maybe 10 to 15 years ago. And in that class, we was, we was talking about the all seeing eye. We was talking about how they was um, looking to restore the plan. Y'all remember that? And they was begging Satan to bring the plan back. They had the same plan that Nimrod had. Bring it back to the earth. Everybody understand that? So they've been working on this for a long time, and they finally at the completion of it. And they said that they're running out of time with it and very angry. Everybody understand that? The scripture says, except that the Lord has shortened those days, read on. No flesh read on, should be saved. Read on. But for the elect's sake. For Israel, my chosen. Read it again. But for the elect's sake. For Jacob, my elect. Read it one more time. But for the elect's sake. Read on. Whom he have chosen. Whom he have what? Chosen. Read on. He have shortened the days. Okay, he have shortened the days. So what's the result of that? They speeding things up now. Let's get the book of Revelations chapter 12. So now that they see time is short, they're trying to, they're trying to speed it up and bring it to pass. So what does the Bible tell us? Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Let's read it. Let's read it. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Read. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens. Okay, why are the heavens rejoicing? Because the time has been cut short. It's almost time to deliver the people of God, to deliver the nation of Israel. So they're rejoicing because the time is short. Read on. And ye that dwell in them. Come on. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. But everybody on earth, the ones that inhabit the earth, the north, the east, the south, the west, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Catch hell to the inhabitants of the earth. Read on. And of the sea. And of the sea. Read on. For the devil has come down unto you. Read on. Having great wrath. Mad as hell. Having what? Great wrath. Angry as hell. Having what? Great wrath. Read on. Because he knoweth. Why is he mad? Because he knoweth. Why is he angry? Because he knoweth. Why is he mad as hell? Because he knoweth. Read on. That he hath but a short time. Okay, yeah, but a short time. So what the scripture says, the scripture says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. If you don't see that you are in this, <laughs> you don't see woe on earth, you don't see woe to the inhabitants of the earth and, and the people in the islands and in the sea. Okay, this stuff is already happening. Do you ever understand that? Great wrath is coming, having great wrath. So what is this beast up to? This, this, uh, this dragon. These rulers of the darkness of this world. Okay, what are they up to? To, to, to kill, um, have people killed on, on, on um, massive levels. Not one, not two, not ten, not a thousand. Ten thousands and upwards being wiped out. Huh? What are they up to? Okay, you, everything that you already seen, what are they up to? Tell me what they're up to. You already seen it, you're supposed to be able to tell me. What are they up to to kill you? Huh? What's the, what's the main one that they're trying to tell you is going to kill you? Come on, come on, y'all. Don't do this to me, no. Please, thank you, terrorism. Thank you. You can't go to a baseball game. The whole stadium might blow up. <laughs> and it's going <laughs> to tell you. You better stay out the movie theaters. I tell you that, right? That's about a good, depending on, the, depending on the blockbuster that's coming out and the size of a theater, okay? That's a good 100, 200 people right there. You understand that? Don't be, listen, the, 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 the popular night to go to the movie, a Friday night, okay, you better not be caught in the movie theaters. I tell you that right now. <laughs> you know, in the theater with a bunch of lunatics anyway, okay? Depending on where you're at, you know, you're going to be secondhand breathing weed. <laughs> you're going to come out of there high as hell. Yeah. <laughs> People talking and texting and talking on the phone and... <laughs> Okay, then you're going to have a lunatic stand up and shoot everybody. How about that? Okay. Better catch that matinee. <laughs> First of all, it's affordable. <laughs> Second of all, you can pretty much watch everybody that walk in. about five or six people in there. You're like, oh. I don't know about that cat. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Terrorism. 
Even though there's really no war on terror, we done went through that, right? There's a war of terror, right? But terrorism is one of the things that they are using. You know, baseball stadiums and, and large gatherings is the what they call soft targets. Everybody understand that? Malls, where wherever a lot of people congregate, they want to kill a lot of people at one time. And then they got you thinking that they, they let you see who the enemy is. They say, oh, it's ISIS. Before it was ISIS, it was it was Al Qaeda. Before it was Al Qaeda, it was Al Shabab. It was, you know, <laughs> Shish Kebab. <It> was <laughs> I couldn't resist that one. It was. Yeah. <laughs> It was just too easy. Yeah, you, know, you send your kids to school, they grab all the 200 kids out to school and take them hostage. And they tell you, listen, be afraid of these things. But then you think that, okay, this is overseas. This is in other countries. This is in war to all countries. They, you know, Jake is always re removed. They, you know, they used to call parts of uh, Harlem Beirut, okay? <laughs> They used to call they call in Chicago now Chirac. You know. They just want they just want to be you know, part of the trifling that's so bad. But what about Columbine? What happened to that? The anniversary of that is um is here. Okay? Shootings in schools. Huh? Shootings in colleges. Colleges all the way down to elementary schools. Think this stuff ain't coming up coming to home? Well, that was in Columbine. You you waiting for it to come to Brooklyn? You waiting for it to come to Bed-Stuy? It's coming.